The following message is from King's Church 1066, based in Hastings, Bexhill and the surrounding area. For more information, head to our website, kings1066.org. Thank you, thank you. So, I'm Janair. I'm not Joe. This I'm Joe. Is, this is Joanna. We love, we love, I've lived in Hastings all my life pretty much. And I love having a family here. And I love being part of this local church. And we really love leading connect groups and doing midweek church life. We feel like we get the best job. So that's who we are. Um, And we kind of thought this was a rare opportunity for us. Start of the academic year, we get to think about just Hastings. And that's, you know, this time next month, like we were saying, St. Leonard's will be meeting weekly. Bexhill have already, you know, God's blessing that part of the that town, God's using them, God's building church there. This is just like a little family meeting right now, around the dinner table, we're thinking about just Hastings. Um, So, we're just going to pray really quickly, and then we're going to get stuck straight into some scripture. So before Matthew 22, if you want to quickly flick to there, and I'm going to pray for us. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you that even in the worship, you were talking about there's no one that's too far off. We can all have a place at the table Lord, thank you that you break chains like loneliness and depression and lies and anxiety. God, you are doing things all around this town and the towns around, God. Thank you that your spirit is here with us right now. God, would, as we open up your word, would you set it on fire in our hearts? Holy Spirit, we ask. We're hungry for more of you. Come and speak this morning. Amen. Amen. So let's look at what Jesus says. This is Matthew 22, 37 and 38. Let's see what Jesus has to say. Jesus declared, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbour as yourself. Familiar words, but so good to be reminded again of what the great commandment is for every believer. Jesus says, to his disciples, to us today through the words, love God with all that you are and love those around you. It's what we were made to do, church, to love God and to love those around us. We start inwardly and then that outworks into our life. It's not religion where it's outward works in. This is an inward out thing. Love God, then love those around. So that's the commandment. And then Jesus in his grace, he doesn't just leave it there. He gives us the how to in the great commission. So if you will turn with me to Matthew 28, starting at verse 18, it's up on the screen as well. Not only did Jesus put this love into action by dying and rising again on the cross, amen. But then he gathers his disciples before he ascends back to the Father. And this is the great commission, the how-to. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore you go, church, disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And then this beautiful promise, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So how do we love God and how do we love those around us? We go and we make disciples. We go and we share the gospel. I've met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I want you to know and love him too. He is life-giving. You've got fear of death. Let me tell you about the King of life who sets eternity in your hearts. That's how we go. We build strong foundations in our walk with Jesus, ready to go out. Amen. Amen. We're excited. So we've got that. The great, greatest commandment, Greatest commission, love God with all my heart to love those around me and to go and share that news. How do I actually outwork that and do that? So we've got three things here. In my personal walk with Jesus, I can read my Bible. I can wake up tomorrow and read my Bible and read that. Yeah, I want to share my faith and I can pray for my friends at work and I can, you know, in my daily life, I might pray for family and stuff. In local church, what we're doing right now, just take a second and look around. Look around the room. Look at all these beautiful people. And strange looking people. Um, There is, where else in society do you get this cross section of people? 
What else brings people together and unifies people for the same purpose? Only the gospel does that. I promise you, you won't find many other groups, knitting or football or things like that, maybe. But this is, this is beautiful, young, old, wherever you're from, we've all got the same heart. So in the local church, the preaching of the word, that's where we hear, we get encouraged by elders and apostles, love God with all your heart, go and share the news, love one another. And then the other way that we really want to focus in on this morning is midweek church life, connect groups one anothering, spurring one another on, running partners. When I'm praying for my work, my work colleagues, and I get disappointed and I get disheartened and then I get someone alongside me and they say, I'll pray with you, let's pray together. And it's like, oh, we're sharing it now. And that's, that's exciting, that's what we're so excited about. Um, it's a bit, it's a little bit like this. I can pick and choose, you know, I could just have my personal walk with God and I can just have Sundays, but... I might just sort of skip the, the midweek one another ring. And it's a bit like saying to God, well, you can use me to build your church, but only on Sunday or only when I'm not busy. And it's like, no, no, God, my cry is, and what I've felt stirred about is, God, you can use all of my calendar. You can use all of my energy and resources to build your church. Amazing. You can tell we're really excited and we have been praying that faith rises in this room so that you run with us as a venue. So we've kind of started biblical foundation, big picture, great commandment, great commission, zoning it down. What does that look like in a believer's life? So now what does this look like for us in connect groups? Well, we'd love to uh, take a look at Acts 42, the classic connect group scripture, but we want to delve into it a bit differently. We want to look at it with the lens of uh, our heart for connect groups, which has been to look up, in and out, to look up together. We've been doing it this morning, but looking up together as we gather in smaller groups, devotion, cultivating love for Jesus, when there's nothing like when you hear someone pray right and they're just pouring out their devotion on Jesus in a connect group and you're standing there like, God, give me what they've got. And you can say, man, I'm really struggling with my walk with God. I don't even know where my Bible is. And you can get long people aside you and say, come on, we'll pray for you. We'll pray. You get some time to spend with God. So there's that devotion, that encouraging, that challenging together. And I think having visited, we've got the privilege of visiting connect groups. I think we're really good at that. I just want to commend you as a venue. You are so good at encouraging each other and going on a discipleship journeys together. So up, then the in. We want to show love inwardly to one another. We want to build strong bases of communities that are pastorally strong, that there's care, that it, it shows how we love God by how we love one another. That's right through the scripture, right? We want places where it's safe to be vulnerable, where we can open up, we can share, we can have fun, we can eat together, have a laugh, all of that. But there's depth and honesty and openness and also practical. I heard someone years ago say, I didn't have a car and my connect group rallied around and we all chipped in and they bought me a car. I mean, if that doesn't show radical community, loving God living, I don't know what else does. And again, I just want to commend you guys. I see connect groups in this venue well done. I see the love you have for one another. And we, we can grow in all of these, but I just want to say well done because I see so much love shared in community and it's beautiful to see. So loving up, loving God, loving inwards. And then finally, loving outwards. Sharing Jesus together with friends, family, work colleagues, those trapped in poverty, those who are vulnerable, those in our patches. Bringing the up and the in out. Strong foundations. This came through in our prayer meeting this morning. God builds strong foundations that help us lengthen out. So very quickly, let's look at the first churches in Acts 2.42. And we just see what they were like. Janelle, you go for it. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, 
attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favour with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Amazing. Now see, it's already come up on the screen, which is great. Let's just look at this again. And we're going to talk through this beautiful dance of loving God, loving one another and loving the lost. So let's read it again, just to get this in us. It's not our persuasion. This is God's word that needs to get in our hearts. So they look upwards. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and inward to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer upwards as they remember Jesus on the cross, his death and resurrection. And everyone was filled with awe. There's an upness. At the wonder and signs performed by the apostles outward, people saw the outworking of God doing stuff. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. What a beautiful inward description. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need outwards, blessing the community. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple court, inwards. They broke bread together in their homes, inward. And they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, inward, praising God, upward. And they enjoyed the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Out, out, out. It's pretty even, right? We can see this beautiful exchange in how we're called to live together with loving God, loving one another and loving the lost. I love that. I found that so helpful. Just like the balance is there. Devotion to God is there. Devotion to one another is there. And the encouragement to go out that they loved looking outwards, sharing what they had with everyone around them. And it's pretty simple, right? It's not rocket science. For, for about 2000 years since we've been doing the same thing, we've been... We've, we've got the same plan. So there's nothing really new here. But since January, we've been thinking about connect groups, 242s. Two we've been praying together. And just these prophetic things have just been dropping. So we're completely convinced from Scripture, this is where we, where we should be going, always. This is the church we want to be building, right? Yeah. This is family that we, we want, healthy family, healthy connect groups that look like this. But we've just been felt reminded and prodded with little prophetic pictures. So being salt and light, having a gritty edge. Paul Ebworthy bringing that, and that's just come up time and time again. Letting down your nets. And the picture that just I cannot escape from, we can't escape from, is a fleet of fishing boats going out and being Hastings venue, Bexhill venue, and soon to be St. Leonard's venue, a fleet of fishing boats going out. And having, you know, devotion to God, devotion to one another and going out and sharing that good news. And I just want to say Hastings, Hastings venue, whether you're thinking, whether you live in battle and that's your, that's your patch. We're, we're not just going to sit back. That this time next month, St. Leonard's will be going weekly. And that's exciting. And I cannot wait to hear what God's going to do in that place. But we're all fishing. We're not just clapping we're all fishing, we're all going to let down our nets. And I, I, maybe it's more helpful to not think of us as one big boat, but we are a fleet. We are a fleet of boats going out into our town and into our patches. And I love this town. I've grown up in this town. I love it so much. But when we say, let's reach this town and, and show, you know, bring God's kingdom, it's a bit daunting. I think it's little old me. It's little old us, King's Church Hastings, my little old connect group. Where do I start? Hastings is just 90 odd thousand people. And, I, and, then, I, and then I get indignant because the, the scriptures convince me, but then I get indignant. I remember Hastings, one of the stats is that it's performing one of the lowest towns in income, employment, education, training, health, disability, crime, housing, living environments. There's a stark difference to that bit in Acts that we saw, isn't there? There's a stark difference when we hear that this town is struggling and there is darkness and the devil's getting footholds. And I think, oh God, would you move? Yeah. God, would you break in? When I walk past the, the mosque down my road that's getting aggravation during the protest, and when I walk past the homeless person outside co-op, my heart breaks. And I think, God, there must be more than just being a happy, comfy group. <laughs> do, do you agree? There's this, there's this map that we feel like as we've shown, we've been praying as connect group leaders, as two for two leaders. If you'd like to stick up the map, Dan, 
as we've kind of thought of Hastings like this, and we've thought of fishing boats going out like this, God's just been stirring me left, right and centre. All of us as connect group leaders, we've just got so excited. We've thought, you know, we've been thinking of this phrase, what about my patch for my connect group? If I think, okay, let's scale it down. What about my patch? And then a few weeks ago, Jeremy Simpkins preached on the cabbage patch and he said, where are you, Hastings? Stand up for your patch. And we were like, we didn't tell him about that. And then, and then Mahesh came last week. We wasn't here, but we heard he was talking about lighthouse groups and talking about these, these groups that go into the neighbourhoods and the streets. And they're like these little beacons of light and they gather and they scatter. And they're comfy places for new Christians to learn and to belong and feel safe. But they're dangerous enough for people to have a go and grow. And that's the dream that we have. God, what would it look like if your kingdom broke out in my little street? in my little connect group. Joe's going to bring a bit more clarity to that map. So if you'd like to put that back up then. So as a church, we have a rich heritage and history. I don't know if Dave and Pam are here this morning, but probably 40 odd years ago, they brought the kind of cell church movement into our church to say, come on, let's meet together across the town. And this has been going on throughout the last 40 years. A while ago, we had community groups that went into the town. So what we're telling you today is nothing new. But what we feel is, come on, let's go again, church. Let's go again. Hastings, Battle 1066 venue. Let's go again. So what are we looking at on the map? We have just we like colours. I don't know if you can tell. I colour everything just because I'm dyslexic and I love it. Um, so what are we looking at? We're looking at the map of... 242 groups across Hastings, Battle and inching into 1066 lands. So we're looking at these patches where in each patch there would be two, three, four connect groups that have a passion and a heart to see God move in that patch. Now, as you can see, there's also Daytime 242 Group, which is headed up by Dennis and Pat Noland, who are epic. And I love just speaking to one of our Connect Group leaders in that Daytime Group, who said, well, you know, we don't really have a patch. We live all across the town. But our patch is the bus routes of Hastings. And I was like, come on, that is so good. And then we also have another kind of group, which is the students in 20s. So if you're 18 to 20 something, then that is a group that collects and kind of doesn't fit the mould as well. It goes across Beth, uh, Bexhill, St. Leonard's and Hastings. And again, come Lord, move in that demographic. Come and move. So this is messy. It doesn't look all in neat, tidy boxes. And we love it because it's God's messy church made up of people that are fumbling our way through as we follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. So uh, where are we up to? So dreaming a bit for our patch. I wonder where your patch is. I wonder, as you look at that map, where does God prick your heart? What schools are in your patch that you can say, God, would you move in that school? What are some of the street names in your patch? Some of the community centres that you can begin to dream together and say, what about if we hired that out for Christmas? What about if we did something in the park or the nearby green area? What events are going on in our areas, in our patches, that we can say, come on, we'll serve, we'll get involved. What's God's heart for your area? What are the things you are going to battle in prayer as individuals and as groups and two for two groups for your patch to say, God, I'm indignant and I will not have that in my patch. Would you move? Maybe it's not where you live. Maybe it's where you work and you just feel drawn like, I work there, they're my people and God's just stirring your heart. And a, a really helpful way we've kind of approached this is just those three words at the bottom, relational, locational, and missional. So for some of you, you might be thinking, well, hang on a moment, I'm already in a connect group and I live in Silver Hill, but my connect group's in awe. That's all right, you've got that relational tie. And it might be today, God stirs your heart to go, no, I wanna, I'm jealous for Silver Hill. But it also might be, no, God's doing something with my relationship with my connect group leader. I'm catching from them that missional heart. And we just say, keep going. So this isn't about location, location. This is about relational, missional um, relationships where God catches our hearts together. Amazing. So yeah, and then also locational. It might be, where do I live? Okay, I'm going to go there. And then, like I said, might be where you work or where your kids go to school. 
or where family live and you think, oh, I've got such a heart for Malvin Way, even though I don't live there. So there's different ways to approach this and we're excited to see what happens. Aware that's a lot, we just went boom. <laughs> so just gonna like let it sink in for a bit. And maybe you just wanna, just even now, pray under your breath in your heart. God, where's my patch? Where's my patch? And well, I've got some other questions here to just sort of prayerfully consider and go away with this morning. So how, how am I going to grow this year? And I'm asking myself this, how am I going to grow? Where am I plugged in? It might not be connect groups, it might be serving or something else, but how am I going to grow? How am I connected? Again, it might not be connect groups, how am I connected? And where's my patch? And I just think, you know, we, might, we may even send that map out, if that's okay, on e-news. And just over the, we've got three weeks of Connect Group sign up starting from this week to just have eyes of faith and pray and go, okay, God, let's go again. Where are you calling me? Um, yeah, we're going to talk about some other practicals of how to actually do sign ups. But really quickly, with those two for two patches, they are places where actually we, st we still have people that lead those 242 patches and areas. So if you're a 242 leader or a connect group leader, can I invite you to stand? And we may not have them all in the room, but could you stand? And this morning, we wanted to start sign up with a commission and a fresh wind of God for these guys that lead connect groups that are already doing this. They're being being part of that fleet, they're being lighthouses. We're going to pray. So if you're around them, you can stand as well. We're just going to spend a few minutes. We're going to pray for our leaders that they get a fresh filling of God, that they get fresh vision. Let's pray together quickly. Yeah. We want to hear you, church, praying out loud for these leaders. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Fill them, we pray. Bless them. Honour them. Nurture them in you, Lord God. We ask that you come and move and have your way further. We pray, Lord Father, we lift up these faithful men and women to you. Thank you for leadership. Thank you for godly, servant-hearted leadership. And we ask for a fresh anointing, a mantle over these men and women, their families, their homes. Lord God, we ask that you would come and move their hearts in faith. We pray as connect groups form over the next few weeks that there just be a oneness of unity in heart and mind around these guys that when they fill their homes or they go along to someone else's home, however it looks. Lord God, by your spirit, would you come and move? We want strong, pastorally sound groups to be raised and staked in the ground in order to lengthen outwards. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Can we just give our leaders a clap? We're so grateful for you. So just really quickly, we've... It's really great to pray together. Joe. how do I sign up for a connect group? How are we doing it this year? That's a good question, Janelle. <laughs> so <laughs> we've got some banners that we've just turned around today in the coffee box. And this is our heart. We're giving you a sneaky peek for the next few venue Sundays. So Paul and Paul and us, and as a venue team, we've been praying and getting excited about these four words. So connect, love for Jesus, love for Hastings, getting stuck in with serving our church and our community and sharing our story. So that's just a hint of what's to come over the next few venue Sundays. But today, like we said, and hopefully you've picked up, we're going all out for
for Connect Group. So it's the start of the year and we are going to be signing up this Sunday, next Sunday and the following Sunday. And of course, giving you time and information in the week. So what you'll do is there'll be slides coming up at the end of the meeting and there's also the banner in coffee books. There's a QR code that Tamara has amazingly designed all these. Um, there's a QR code that you can scan and it will take you to a page on our King's website where you'll be able to click Hastings Venue, which includes Battle and Breed as well. So you click on Hastings Venue and then loads of smiley, wonderful faces will come up <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can basically just take your time to click on the group, see when they meet, where they meet, what they're about, uh, go and chat with them, go and have a kind of, what do you think? What's your group about? What's your heart? So you've got time and space to do this. And there's lots of groups you can scroll through. And then this is the important bit. When you click sign up, that is not a guaranteed space in that connect group. That is because we don't want to have one group with 40 people in. <laughs> so what we're going to do is as you sign up, what you're doing is giving Janair and I and the team your information. So we will take that. We will then contact you and journey with you uh, with your interests of Connect Group to find the right group for you and see what the leaders think as well. So do feel free to put your interest into a couple of groups. That's OK as well. Just to say, yeah, I'd be happy here or here. That's amazing. And then we will be in touch with you shortly. Just a couple of pastoral things as you finished. Are you with us? You're good. If you have been hurt by Connect Group in the past, I know that this could be really tough for you this morning. But we are a bunch of broken people and we all mess up sometimes, right? And we want to journey together in forgiveness and freedom and healing. So I just want to say, if you've been hurt before, don't miss out this time. Give it another go. If you're sitting there thinking, I am knackered. I am so busy. I barely can get the kids down before 10 o'clock at night. Maybe you're a single parent or carer and you just have completely excluded yourself thinking there's no way I can get along in an evening. Please don't discount yourself. Come and speak to us. We want to make a way forward for all to have a place to belong and journey in connect groups. So please hear us on that. We've been loving saying to some of our leaders, would you go and actually do your connect group? So you guys are leading it, but you can do it in this family's home. And it's just a beautiful way where you can say, I'll offer up my home. I do not want to lead, but I'll offer up my home and I'll make people tea and I'll let someone else come in and lead the group. We've, we've been blessed by that with our kids as well. And so there's ways around this. Do not feel excluded. As well as the slides and the banners at the end, Janair and I will be out in coffee box and we would love to speak to you. So please come and speak to us, speak to connect group leaders. And we want to make sure that everyone has a place at the table. Amen. Band, if you'd like to come up. And as a sign of saying, yeah, we're up for this, should we stand together? And I'm just going to make one last plea. I'm going to speak about the gospel. <laughs> because it's good news. Amen. In the gospel of Jesus, we bear witness to the greatest act of hospitality ever displayed. It's not just a picture or a nice saying. It's true. We can now approach his throne right now with full confidence. After feet washing and table laying, bread is broken, wine is poured, and Jesus Christ goes beyond what any host could ever do. He not only foots the bill, he totally fulfills the law. The son of God, the perfect and blameless one, leaves the comfort of his place next to his father in heaven. He goes out to suffer and die in our place conquering all sin and death. We belong outside, he invites us in. At the heart of the gospel is a radical act of grace and mercy and hospitality that should compel us to want to reflect God's love to those around us in any way that we can. The meals that we cook, the songs that we sing, the people we invite over, the favours we offer. This is the main event. It's when your tyre bursts and you get chatting to a stranger. It's when you're in line at the job centre. It's offering to pray for someone on the bus. It's communities that dream and spur one another on to share their faith and love their town. That's what kingdom living looks like. The gospel confirms that everyone is welcome to the table. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your hospitality that we're all welcome in. Lord, would you do something in us as a church? 
Would you make your name famous? Would you build your church? Would you bring about your kingdom in this place? We pray, amen.